How's it going guys and welcome to another episode of Career Mode, this is episode number 25 and uh, yeah we start the episode off with me showing you what the squad looks like, obviously now um, we are basically right at the uh, first game of the Barclays Premier League season so I thought I'd uh, show you what the squad looks like, I've um, reverted back to a 4-4-2 wide diamond, uh, that was what I was first using when I took over as Blackburn manager, then I switched to a 4-3-3 holding uh, but with Jordan Slew and Kim Shinwook I reckon they're going to be a really good partnership so I think you know that, that's the best way to really because I, I need to play two strikers up front but I really do like the idea of having a holding midfielder but I've dropped a teeth to the bench because as you'll see here he's actually beginning to decrease in stats as I go back to here uh, in the squad report and that sucks I mean he's 30 years old so it's got to be expected but um, oh, it, it just sucks man like, I love a teeth so much and um, for his uh, for his attributes to start going down now, you know his stamina has gone down to <laughs> I was going to say only 87, but uh, it used to be 91, and it just sucks now. So I'm going to have to have him as a bench player and um, just bring him on whenever I need him. But he is a quality player, no doubt about that. But yeah, the first game of the Barclays Premier League season is against a team that came up with us from the Empire Championship in the last season. That is Leicester City, of course. Uh, I think they went up via the playoffs. But um, yeah, this will be an early six-pointer relegation clash, and just my luck, David Nugent cocks up his finish. The hits Kurt Zuma and it goes straight back to him and in five minutes we were already 1-0 down and like I said this really like in my mind uh, it was an early six point relegation class because I'm not kidding myself we're not going to be you know like a, a Champions League Europa League team at the start of next season but you know we're we're definitely going to be fighting for our lives down the relegation scrap and I'm, I can only imagine Leicester will be as well and um yeah, I was, uh, I was just basically really trying to get back from that uh, early setback. But um, Kim Shinwook missed a sitter here, and then he missed another one in the 22nd minute, putting the ball over here when he really should have scored from such a, uh, a close-range header. But uh, Leicester were really threatening as well. This was David Nugent going through again. Should have made it 2-0 past Gazaniga's post there. But um, we were also on the attack as well. But I really do feel like I need to sweat more as well, because uh, you'll see it in this episode. There's a few times where I have a chance where I'm going one-on-one, -on -one and I could cut the ball back for an easy finish, but I... I decide not to and just mess it up and I really do feel as though I need to sweat more but I don't know whether you guys would like to see me do that because obviously sweat isn't exactly the coolest thing in the world but you know I just need to get the results really but um, I mean when, can I, when I can finish like this I, I certainly don't need to sweat I mean that was an amazing finish from Kim Shinwook uh, after a lovely piece of dribbling to score our first goal uh, in the Premier League back from the Premier League I should say after Blackburn relegated two seasons ago but um, yeah this is a, a classic example here Wilfred Zahar down the right hand side it, I mean it's just such an easy easy chance if I decide to sweat the ball but even when I do I still manage to cock it up Hemrickson somehow manages to blaze that ball over the bar but this is the uh, the chance I was referring to here Hemrickson who's a great playmaker he'll be a great replacement for a teeth plays through Jordan Slew he goes down the left hand side and I could have just cut the ball across the face of goal but instead I'm trying to finish it myself and it's just not working so I really do need to sweat more if I'm going to pick up the three points in uh, in this game or any game really and here's a classic example with just a few minutes to go Kim Shin work one on one. He's got two players he can sweat the ball to. He goes to finish himself, and it's my fault. I just completely cock up the finish. I'm terrible at one on ones, as you guys would probably know by now. But um, yeah, I, I definitely need to sweat more if we're going to stay up this season. But um, I just don't want to really. I just like trying to finish it myself. But uh, straight after the game, Norwich do accept the transfer offer of one million pound plus Ruben Rashina, uh, a player that I don't really need for uh, John Ruddy, their goalkeeper. And uh, yeah, Ruddy, I, I hope I can bring him in. Really, for some reason, the news are was keep saying that Gazanig was playing well when as much as I love the guy I'm pretty sure that's wrong he's uh, he's not had a good uh, pre-season or start to the season but uh, John Ruddy declines the contract offer which absolutely sucks because like I said I really do need to get a better goalkeeper you know he's uh, 11 better on the overall than Gazaniga so he should be perfectly fine to be a first choice goalkeeper and I'm pretty sure he grows to around an 80 as well despite already being like 26 years old but he does accept the contract offer when I give him crucial first team player status so John Ruddy is going to become my new number one at Blackburn and I'm really pleased with that really he's a good player and uh, like I said I'm sure he'll grow another few attributes as well probably get out to the, uh, the very low 80s which will be very nice as well but um, yeah I mean like I say Ruben Rashina was a player that I never used so I thought you know of our low budget why not just trade him in and uh, you know put a bit of cash in as well and hopefully Norwich will accept it and you know thankfully they did so I was really pleased about that signing to be honest I, I didn't think I'd be able to do it but I was very very pleased indeed but the following game is at home to Sunderland um, I wasn't really sure about Sunderland they got Scott Dan their team of course uh, a player who left us in the summer transfer window as he came back to Ewood Park but I really wasn't sure about Sunderland I didn't know whether this would be a, a very very difficult game 
game or maybe it would just be another tough game to be honest like the Leicester game but uh, once again it was just missed opportunities missed chances Kim Nelva a really good chance to put us 1-0 up and misses the uh, the chance but uh, Sunderland did take the lead uh, midway through the first half Jack Colback here down the left hand side playing the ball to Adams Adams plays the ball into James McLean he eventually crosses the ball in Sessignon's head as well saved by John Ruddy but unfortunately the ball forced to a very prolific striker in the Scotsman Stephen Fletcher and he puts the ball past John Ruddy unfortunately no debut clean sheet for him but it's 1-0 to Sunderland I was absolutely gutted about that just doing my best to try and get back here here's Wilfred Taha down the right hand side he plays the ball into Jordan Slew and again look at my finishing man I've, I've got to sort it out if we're going to stay up this season really really poor but uh, Herrickson into Kim Shin work here his shot deflected and over Simon Mignolet's bar chance for the corner and really we should be doing better from corners you know we've got some really tall players on our side obviously Kim Shin work gets his head to the ball here uh, then we've got players such as uh, Sorensen who's six foot four, uh, Shotton and uh, Zuma are both six foot three. So uh, Slew six foot three as well. So we should really be doing better from corners. But uh, unfortunately, we didn't there. Mingale made a great save, and uh, Slew plays Zahara in here. Zahara over to Kim Shin Wook, and once again, one on one with the goalkeeper. And again, I messed it up. It's a terrible finish, but. Got to say, great save from Mignolet regardless uh, to keep the score at 1-0 to Sunderland. But uh, unfortunately for us, our first choice left back, Marcus Olsen, picks up a nasty injury here. As soon as he went for the header, I honestly did feel the worst because I knew he was going to come off second best. And uh, unfortunately, Olsen is injured. And uh, as you'll see in just a moment, he's going to be out for four months, which absolutely sucks because I really don't have many left backs on cover. So I'm going to have to try and sign someone uh, before the end of the transfer window, which is, of course, very, very soon. But tell uh, with uh, just around quarter of an hour to go. Ruddy plays the ball out to a teeth here, back to Ryan Shotton. Another really nice passing goal here. Slew goes down left hand side, skips past Phil Barsley, keeps running, keeps running, keeps running. Had one on a wing at this point, crosses the ball in, and finally Kim Shin Wook gets a header ball. Well, what? A header to fall into the back of the net. And uh, yeah, it's 1 1. Absolutely delighted to level the score up here, and it's a long time coming, really. We should have leveled the game up. Uh, in the first half, let alone with just 15 minutes to go in the whole game. But um, we did, that's the most important thing. But uh, just a few minutes after that, John Ruddy punches away this corner. It comes to Lee Yong Jae, who plays a great ball out to Jordan Slew. He skips past Phil Barsley, a lovely piece of dribbling. He goes one on one with the goalkeeper, and again, 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 my finishing is just woeful. I've got the worst composure stat in the world. The game finishes 1 1. I was gutted because we really should have won that with the amount of chances we had in the second half. That should have been a win for Blackburn, our first three points of the season but unfortunately it's a draw at least we stay unbeaten from the first two games I guess you've got to look at the positives but uh, yeah Martin Olsen sorry not Marcus Olsen uh, out for four months so we have to go ahead and sign another left back because I mean we don't have any other left backs in our side believe it or not so I decided to go for this guy David Brivio uh, from Atlanta I can only imagine he's Italian uh, he's got a bit of experience he's 25 years old so he's not exactly a teenager uh, he's 71 rated so not bad he'll do the job on the cover and uh, he's also got some pretty decent stats when it comes to defending and and uh, also taking shots from range, which is really nice because I, I don't score enough goals from range. So maybe Brivio can be the new John Arnarisa, who knows. But uh, yeah, I offered 1.1 million because obviously our budget's a bit thin at the moment. But uh, Atlanta said they want some more money, which is perfectly understandable because he's a great player. But yeah, they said 1.6 million this time, which is really annoying because first they only wanted 1.4. But uh, I was just basically bargaining and haggling with Atlanta saying, you know, come on, we ain't got the money, we ain't got the cash. Just let us have him on the cheap. But they were like, nope, he's one of our left backs, we need to keep him. But uh, thankfully they did go ahead and accept this last offer here, which was 1.4 million. So we go ahead and offer David Brevio a contract. Like I said, he's he's going to be a player who's, in my opinion, just going to sort of sit in the uh, reserves when Olsen comes back. But for the time being, he'll be my first choice left back and I'll be perfectly fine with that. So hopefully we can get him in. And um, unfortunately, he says he wants to stay at Atlanta. So maybe we've got to offer him a bit more money, a uh, better first team squad status, maybe a clean sheet bonus. I don't know. I'm just really hopeful we can get him in because, uh, like I said, we're, we're coming towards the end of the transfer window and uh, we definitely need a new left back now that Olsen is going to be out for four months but uh, as always guys a big thank you for watching I really hope you've enjoyed this episode and uh, yeah just going to leave it there early on and say I'll see you for the next episode very soon